Okay, Jim, I, I have to ask you this. I we I, I feel I feel strongly about this. Can can we please tell the fans something about what we the the, the thing that we have coming up? You know what I'm talking about. I- I, I, yeah, no, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Not, not. Uh, I don't think right now is a good time. It's still a little early for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't think that maybe this uh, not bribe of dwarven gold, silver, and copper can't uh, maybe slip a little secret about that upcoming uh, Kickstarter thingy? No, no, nothing like that. No, no. I, I don't. You know, I don't need any more uh, uh, gold or platinum or electrum. Okay. Or whatever. I, I got plenty of it. I got bags of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't want to bring this up, but I have like a cousin who's married to like very weird. It's it's a very weird esoteric tale of, of connection to royalty. But I think I can make you a duke. You could yeah, just, be a duke. Just a duke? No, no I'm not just. Yeah, a duke. you'd be come a kick-ass duke, duke, man. Come on, I don't want to yeah, be a kick-ass I, duke. Grand prince, at least. Oh, no, got to get with that. Ah, oh, okay. Well, it works for tenacious D. Um, all right. Last thing I can offer you. You know, I used to teach taekwondo. I can teach right. you how to punch. Mm-hmm. I can teach you how to do a proper punch. You gotta stay with the trunk. Don't hit with your branches. Don't get that boxer's fracture. Come on, man. We just need to tell him something. Anything. I, I don't know. I'll be all right. No, I don't. No, thank you. I, listen, I, there's nothing you can do, right? Like, I, I, there's. It's too early. We don't have the marketing promo materials for it. If, you know, if we talk too much about it now, we'd spoil the surprise. Come on. Let's just get to the yeah, show. Yeah, it would. It'd be. It'd be. It'd be weird. It'd be too yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, that's. Should hang on to that though. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, you'll still get your reward, Jim, uh, and it won't be stuff. So let's talk about rewards that aren't that aren't stuff on WebDM. Let's do it. This episode is brought to you by Inkwell Ideas and their side quest decks, live on Kickstarter now. Has your party ever veered off on an unplanned path or taken an interest in a random NPC you didn't expect? Or maybe you're struggling to fill part of your world. A side quest deck is the answer. Each card comes with short summaries with background GM info, multiple adventure seeds, possible encounters, and follow-up ideas on one side with an adventure map on the other. The Kickstarter is for four new decks, Monster Hunts, Pulp Adventure, and two decks of Town Side Quests. Inkwell Ideas also makes tons of other decks like Classic Dungeons, High Seas, Wilderness, Horror, Superheroes, Spies, and a sci-fi deck and more. Whatever you're playing, Side Quest decks are there to inspire you. So check it out. Link in the comments and description. Okay, Jim. So today we're talking about rewards. Rewards beyond rewards. Rewards without stuff. Stuff without stuff. I don't like. How do you? How, how do we phrase this? I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, rewards uh, of the immaterium. <laughs> yeah. Is that two forty k? Non right. Non material <laughs> treasures. So like one of the one of the common things you'll read about for say fifth edition, and and I don't think it's like unique to fifth edition is. Like there's nothing to spend gold on. Players players aren't motivated by huge piles of gold as is sort of a reward and like what would you do with it? And also it's like a hassle to keep track of all those individual coins and gemstones and things. And like when I th- start thinking of non material rewards, I'm like th- this is the this is the baby I don't want thrown out with the bathwater. Like a, <laughs> like we still need to reward the players. We still need to like have some in setting way to show that that the setting, the NPCs, whatever acknowledges their accomplishments, recognizes you know them for mm-hmm. for who they are and like non-material rewards are also a good way to avoid magic item bloat and and you know for those dms who like want to run a more low magic game or who want to be much more um you know restrictive about the kinds of magic items that the party has access to um these are ways to reward your players and their characters and you know still feel like they they've earned something that they you know that the setting and the game has changed to reflect their accomplishments and so um the uh the dungeon master's guide for fifth edition has a neat little section on these but then really just kind of says like oh yeah you could give out land or special favors and then let's really talk through them so i was thinking maybe we could run through some of these and <laughs> <laughs> what well, we Jim, like and how we just use gave them. you 20 pages of they just gave you 20 pages of magic items okay right so. yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> 
what more can I expect? Uh, exactly. Stop being greedy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, gl- yeah greed. It's uh, it, it is a sin. Um, uh, so so yeah. Let's 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 get started here uh, yeah. with these rewards. Let's start with with social rewards. So, uh, yeah. Because this is a role playing game, you're going to have some social encounters. It's a whole pillar of play, right? right? So there should be a way to reward that. Therefore, it it uh, emphasizes and reinforces that pillar of play. Yeah, certainly. And I think when I think of social rewards, the 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 biggest one that I can kind of think of is like access to NPCs. You know, there there's a lot of things, especially if you're running a more like player forward, player driven kind of game where their goals are what spawn the adventures and and drive the game forward than like being able to talk to have access to and and like influence the various npcs of the world is how they will exercise their their agency and like ability to change things if you're a no you know if you're playing a nobody outsider and you want to you know get in good (laughs) with you know the the fantasy city that the dm has set up for you and take over a neighborhood or run the city or the county or the kingdom or whatever like at some point you're going to need to be able to talk to npcs influence them and have them hold your character in esteem and and regard and so like Mm -hmm. that standing in within the npc's eyes is i think a really undervalued maybe underexplored form of rewarding the characters because like it it should mean something right like oh the the, you know these npcs of authority and position and status like they like your characters they hold them in high regard they trust them they will allow themselves to be influenced by your characters and like to me that's a really part of the heart of a lot of social intrigue uh, games is is that interaction between pc and npc and how the npc views that interaction you know mm-hmm. well i mean the, the the dmg does like have a, a section on like reputation right like like having sure. uh have have and so exploring that it 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 gives the players a meta currency mm-hmm. to to it to spend or hoard as they would i mean like yeah. this something like this has been in most rpgs since the beginning like re, i mean like video game rpgs since sure. the beginning yeah, yeah. like reputation was a big thing in Baldur's gate if you yeah. just killed somebody your reputation goes down and the, the freaking flame fish shows up like there should be yeah. a, a a consequence right and it goes beyond just the town guard being called yeah, the town guard's called, but guess what? Now your reputation's dropped down here, and other people are gonna know because word travels, and that is yeah. a way to to show that that right. people are gonna find out about you for good or for ill. Mm-hmm. So you know, decide who you want to get in with, and 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 start boosting those numbers. You know, get, yeah. <laughs> Get out of those working number areas, you know? (laughs) Right, yeah, yeah. Your reputation, you know, whether it's just a a simple score or you don't even, you know, mechanize it. You just sort of have an idea and and let the party know when when that changes, especially if you're doing it through, like, the way that the NPCs and and the like interact with the party. But then, like, getting to a more, like, individual level of, like, I want to have access to this NPC, the captain of the guard, the, the queen's, you know, you know chamberlain the you know whoever the merchants you know uh stable groom or you know or something like those are things where introductions letters of recommendation um those kinds of things become really valuable and and it might seem ephemeral it's not a big powerful magic item it's not a big you know chest of chest of treasure or something like that but having an npc with influence go i will open these doors for you like i'll i you want you needed access to the elite mages guild i've i've got that access i can get you on the inside or i can get you in the courtroom when the emperor arrives for the annual you know courtly festivals or whatever you know to to literally hold court you know i I can get you a spot in there and then what you do with that is is up to you and so like those can then be used in turn for like other forms of reward right like the letter of recommendation could recommend you to a mage who then is going to give you some kind of special training which we'll talk about in a minute but like that is how you start to build up like the social web that underlies Mm -hmm. a lot of 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 gameplay that relies on like status and reputation and how others think of your pcs and the intrigue that follows from that is um is where a lot of this gets uh gets made 
Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if your player has to fill out a resume, you're going to need those references. And you're if you don't ever need get references. any references, right. you can't, no you can't move up in the world, right? <laughs> exactly, right? right? <laughs> It's um, very medieval, way, too, you know, but anyway. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It, oh, it's it, right. Like, this is how it used to be done. You like, have to know completely yeah. because there was no you can't just call someone up and say, hey, would you rehire them? Yeah. You have to come with your letters of recommendation signed and yeah. notated. Right. From someone that you carry those everywhere. Care about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's all yeah. they care about. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and by the way, uh, if you're out there and you want to raise your social standing, if you filled out uh, 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 a Patreon uh, subscription form there or whatever, just call it an adventure. Go go sign up on our Patreon, and you get greater access to these NPCs and our secrets. It's uh, kind of the same thing, but uh, you know, four podcasts a month. That's not it's not nothing. So uh, five bucks a month ain't bad for that. Yeah, uh, moving on here. Uh, next, uh, climbing up that 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 hierarchical ladder of rewards. Yeah. Uh, political rewards which mm. you know a lot of times adventurers are hired by magistrates or barons or you know it, all these people that wield a lot of power yeah. and maybe they don't want to give them gold maybe they want to give them other things uh, because that because these barons have access to a lot yeah yeah and it, it is sort of the next step up because eventually the npcs that the the party starts getting rewards from can give them like real tangible benefits and mm -hmm. you know if we're sticking within the fantasy pseudo medieval uh milieu of, of, of D D, then lands and titles and offices are really sort of the big drivers like that that is how a, 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 you know a monarch rewards loyal vassals right as we're saying like yeah. this plot of land is yours and will pa be passed down to the rest of your family in perpetuity because of your loyal service to me in return for this parcel of land here's what i need on you need from you on a continuing basis and in you know medieval history that's military service but in a D, &D world it could be just about anything you know it, it doesn't have to be uh tied to that uh you know warrior aristocracy but you know land is a big deal and if you want, uh, uh, you know, your, your party to have a base, to have some place to, to to call home, then like, do they own the land <laughs> that the property is built on? Like, it's a very, I don't know, day to day sort of mundane question. But you could turn that into something that's very like valuable. Maybe the there's something magical about that transfer of ownership and you're literally tied to it and and have mm -hmm. some sort of mystical magical connection uh to a to a plot of land or a building or something like that um similarly with like strongholds you know a castle or a, a, some sort of fortification or other sort of prestigious building you know, in, in medieval history, that might be like access to a bridge or a mill or something like that. And you then collect the payments that come from the use of that. But in a fantasy world, this could be just about anything. Like, is your plot of land magically significant? Does it have some sort of connection with whatever ley lines or latent magic that's in the world? Um, there might be structures or something built on it, uh, not just castles, but something that takes advantage of that that you also get as part of that reward and these things almost always come with some sort of obligation right and with an obligation mm -hmm. comes titles and offices if you're going for the pseudo medieval nothing is just given you don't just get some money from the monarch and and that's it it's it's a monopoly that's yours and there's a ceremony involved and everything has a title and and a way to like puff yourself up because everything is about status you know uh, we we're talking about reputation a minute ago like one of the ways that you can physically represent that is with medals and and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh the the symbols of office you know robes and and fancy hats and and jewelry and medallions and scepters and all that other stuff like to me, mid-level and high-level adventurers are running around like covered in the hallmarks of their their honorable deeds. You know, <laughs> they, you, you don't just uh, uh, <laughs> you don't look like nobodies. You can look at them and go, "That person's important." They look like they're they've got the the ear of the uh, you know the monarch or the advisors or the magistrates' council or whatever because they're decked out in these mm -hmm. symbols of office. And then that carries with it like real authority, you know, that 
this is where you start giving your PCs like legal authority in game. Like, yeah, you can, <laughs> you're the only one around here who can do this, right? You're the only one yeah. around here who can use this kind of magic or these kind of weapons or, you know, talk this way or yeah. that kind of thing, dress yeah. like this. You're, yeah. Yeah. You're the sheriff of this valley. Like literally <laughs> <laughs> you're in charge. If there's bandits here, it's not just an adventure. It is your job to yeah. keep them off the road. You know, yeah, to make sure yeah. that the shipments get through this valley. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's your job. Yeah, exactly. And and like anything that's like a special favor or a special privilege or something, like almost always comes with a title or an office. Like like I said, there's you know in a medieval society that that a lot of the fantasy is based on. It's like there's not so much like what we would think of as corruption. That's just all out in the open and then like given yeah. a very <laughs> honorable and and sort of pageant oriented you know like you it's you got your no your nobility right like you got to look the part act the part you know come on yeah. got to inspire all used those to be the beyonds. standards <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah it's not nepotism it wasn't just corruption. who you know you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah it's my dad that's why i got the job duh but uh to to go back to the strongholds part yeah. um if you are it's one thing to uh to get the money to build a stronghold but right. if if you're sitting there and you complete a big old thing and they're like yeah we're gonna give you the castle at east reach and you're like oh shit uh, okay yeah. It, yeah i mean if anything it's a good way to uh it's a good way to fulfill uh, a part of um the lore of the world but also getting in like that line of just like prestige, mm -hmm. uh, it is, it, I don't know, to me, it's just something of like becoming part of a greater story is, yeah. is like the reward. And it's yeah. not just like, oh, you got some money. Like, like right. oh, no, no, this castle has been standing since the dawn of man, you know, mm -hmm. like now it's on you. Uh, now it's on you. And then yeah. like anything else, these things, you give them to them and, you know, then you put them in threat. You put them in peril. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the the idea is that all of these things will lead to further adventures. You know that they mm -hmm. that, that you don't get a castle and and it just like write it on your character sheet and then that's it. You get a castle because the castle's there defending something. A castle is mm -hmm. built because it's a point of defense in what is otherwise seen as a hostile land. So like, what's it there to defend against? The, you know, castles aren't just places where people live. They are. Gar you know they're garrisoned by whatever passes for soldiers in your setting and like who are those how do you you know how do you relate to them as the owner and and sort of leader of this castle do you have somebody who manages things while you're gone like it, it comes with it like not just a host of other npcs to interact with and and use as a resource and a source of adventure but like like you're saying it's embedded in the world and and you know it's a way to tie the actions of the party and the rewards they get to the greater story of the world like what's going on mm -hmm. why is this important yeah yeah for sure um so yeah so uh so you know we've talked about getting those secrets we've talked about getting your titles and your and your strongholds in here but uh let's talk about something that players uh if if that doesn't if that doesn't gild their lily so to sure. speak come on players i think this next one would which is that special training like yeah. something outside of the normal progression of a character. Oh, I got my class, I got my subclass, I get my feats or my ASIs or whatever. But no, 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 no. I'm going to teach you the, you know, five point exploding heart t technique. You mm -hmm, know, like mm -hmm. what happens when somebody says, I'm going to teach you this special technique. Uh, and this goes beyond, you know, your normal uh, doings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Th this is easily my favorite of the non material yeah. rewards. Like, because you know you'll you'll either have players in your group who are like oh i you know i like this class but i also like the features from this class like maybe they can't decide or maybe what they want is this weird mishmash of several different subclasses sort of like cherry picked the abilities cuz they're trying to get this specific vision for something like it's just easy to say you know what you can have the access to that class feature or that feat or that spell or whatever 
you know, if you've jumped through these hoops in the game, hoops being these adventures that you're going to have to go on, you might fail, you might not get it, but, you know, if, if you're a fighter over here looking at something in Barbarian and going, I would really like to have that, that sounds really cool, really awesome, then what you can do as a DM is say, well, here's how you can get that through your actions in the game that it that it's not a mechanical benefit you get because you picked a class or this was a decision point when you leveled up but like you want that thing you don't see how to do it you know what the rules is written and we don't want to rewrite the class then seek out this npc they can teach you how if you if if they you know agree to it you know go to this place and meditate there study there uh you know drink of the waters that are there whatever you know and you will then have that power and i like doing this by both showing <laughs> like npcs who have already done it and then they like blatantly break the rules by concentrating on two spells at once or you know casting two non-cantrips in the same round or you know doing a bunch of battle maneuver stuff when they're they don't read as a fighter you know and yeah, yeah. uh you know like how in the world did they were they able to do that and i can say like well I, I could just be breaking the rules because I'm the DM and I can do what I want. But what if I instead said this NPC has some kind of special training that allows them to do this. And if you're really interested in that, we can talk and I can point you on the right path as a DM for how your character can get that. But they're going to have to earn it. It's a reward. And so yeah. spells, all kinds of proficiencies, uh, skills, feats anything that would otherwise be considered part of the character's class or or other mechanical bits that make them up you can use those as rewards and say you know it's just special training it's outside of that system it's for free take it you know and i, I found those very effective uh in in motivating uh players and in like cust letting them customize their characters based on their accomplishments and and what they've you know what they've done who they know that kind of thing Mm -hmm. Like I said, my fa it's my, yeah, hands I, down my favorite. Oh, most most definitely, because especially, like, feats and proficiencies, uh, like, spells, like, I, I, I see that as kind of should be a normal thing. As you're adventuring, sure. you're adventuring to find this this hidden, you know, this hidden knowledge, these, these right. hidden secrets of, of arcane knowledge, right? But, like, when it comes to extra proficiencies and extra, like, feats, I don't, like, to me, they're just as viable they give you rules for learning new languages right and and learning how to use tools so so being able to find that special someone that's gonna you know that that freaking like combat chef that's gonna teach you all the culinary skills right uh, and do it really fast because it's a reward or learning go to that go to that 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 uh, duelist who's gonna teach you how to dual wield uh yeah. you know uh in, in a special way like that is so freaking like you know kung fu flick like it's <laughs> it's everything that i've been watching since i was a kid where yeah. somebody goes to a mountain and learns the special technique from the master right or a and scroll while you can build that yeah. In, <laughs> yeah while you can just say yeah that's how we're gonna level up our class having something a little bit extra just makes the world feel a little extra special and yeah. And like 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 we're saying, this, the whole point of this is to prevent that extra bloat and that extra gold and and all that right, stuff that right. just kind of to me kind of can get in the way of it like becomes just meaningless. Like, I'm, yeah, you know, I become. Yeah. I'm playing a game here, but I want to feel like it's real, and I don't want to just like because I, I I I've gotten that at a at a higher level character where I look in my golf bag of weapons and go, well, what do I want to use today? Yeah. You know, do I want to use these two swords? Or do I want to use this sword and this axe? Or do I want to, you know, like <laughs> maybe, sure. just maybe. Yeah, maybe. You can just maybe learn a little extra something. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, maybe your fighter's a little weaker and you could go and learn how to be a little bit tougher and you could yeah. learn how, how to be tough. Uh, and and you know take take do some iron bones training with mm -hmm, the monks mm -hmm. on that mountain and just yeah. get a little stronger. Yeah, yeah. Th this especially works well if you're coming up with custom feats and spells and abilities and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and this is the way the players get them. You know, when when I you know speaking of spells, just real quick uh, again, like 
it could be that they learned them from a, another caster, someone, you know, famed for their particular custom spells or something, or they learn it from like an engraving they find on a wall in a ruin somewhere. And they just happen to be the first to be there, like to, to recover this magic. Like that's a really good one is like, they're the only one in the world that knows this thing, whatever it is, whatever custom technique, spell, whatever you want to call it. And mm -hmm. like, it's a, it's a really fun way to just sort of introduce these things, especially if you're making them custom for the players and their characters to help them out with their, you know, sort of vision for how they'd like their character to go. Or, or they've talked a bunch about how hey, it's really cool that this is, you know, part of the world. And I, you know, I like to reward that enthusiasm for the things that I'm creating as a DM to the players. So if they signal to me that like, they really like this part of the world, they really like this part of the setting, then I'm going to go the extra mile to make something custom and interesting for them because it's like, mm -hmm. Hey, I, I see you over here getting super engaged and invested. And, and I, I, I like that. I like to see that. Uh, and so this is a really like, I just find it to be a, a much more impactful and rewarding you know, uh, way to <laughs> to acknowledge the uh, the accomplishments of the characters than just like, hey, it was like 50,000 platinum. Like, you guys are in your fifth bag of holding now? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, and then someone jokes about wrecking the economy and and you know, you're forced yeah. to like, oh, yeah, I guess this really would wreck the game's economy. And, you know. <laughs> Man, hyperinflation followed by in, anyway. That's that's not it's terrible. That's not going yeah. That path. yeah. Hate okay. to see it. No, oh, most definitely. So as as we've discussed these rewards, where now our players have uh, first gotten like rewards from their peers, you know, secrets and reputation. They've gotten rewards from their betters and political uh, appointments and titles, mm -hmm. and they've gotten rewards from the experts in feats and proficiencies and stuff. Now let's let's go beyond the normal. And rewards from on high, supernatural yeah. gifts, yeah. whether they be from gods, demi-humans. I mean, there's a whole host of, of, of beings and places that could hand out like a supernatural gift, yeah. right? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and I, I, in, in this sense, I want to draw specific, you know, explicitly from the DMG because I think that's some really cool stuff in there where they identify essentially like two supernatural gifts, blessings and charms, but then I sort of throw the epic boons in there because most people don't get to 20th level. And if you can find a way to use one of those epic boons for your tier one or two or three characters, then that's probably gonna be a, a really exciting moment for them. And there's some fun stuff uh, in the epic boons. Um, like, I, these are ones where a, a like, you know, if this, if this were a non-supernatural NPC, they you'd be going with like access and secrets and favors or something like that but like befriending and getting in the good graces of a merit right uh is is another matter entirely because that's a, like a, a genie that can you know has the all sorts of magic you know at its beck and call and can like gift things of you they can you know bestow a blessing or a, or a boon upon you that you know could could be whatever uh the guidelines of the dmg recommend that like blessings are the equivalent of a wondrous item but then doesn't give like a rarity range for that uncommon rare very rare whatever <laughs> so you know <laughs> use your best Some judgment in there <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> uh, and that charms uh because they are finite uh in in their use are more like a potion or a spell um you, you know they're usable x number of times or whatever and like all of those i think are pretty pretty interesting uh you know whether it's temporary like okay everybody has access to this kind of spell because you all like spent your short rest in the presence of this planar influence and and you know just instinctually you can activate this magic within you and and gain that benefit you know we ba we, we slept in the light of, of the you know the radiant plane of positive energy or whatever and now we each have a, a heel just hanging around like you know that just get the one um but you can use mm -hmm. it as needed uh, and and especially for like single use effects like go big go go big uh -huh. right they're only going to use it once make it make it big <laughs> you know make it worth well, it what what about this jim yeah because uh, what, what you said just spurred something in me in order to get over the the 15 minute adventuring day 
if you give them something big in that short rest, as long and it is there for them to use mm-hmm. until they make another short rest. Yeah. So, it, yeah. so it's something like, no, we can't show rest, guys. Three of us still have the boon, so we need to keep going. Right. Right. right yeah. It, yeah. Depending on party uh, composition, you, that could be either disaster or just what they need. Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't exactly. do it in a party that had like a lot of mixed warlocks and monks, and then long rest, yeah. refresh yeah. classes to pit them against each other. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but if you but, have a party, because I mean, there are there are DMs out there. We get people people message us all the time. How do I get my players to stop resting? Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them a, if they just completed a thing, give them a little extra things. something. And yeah. uh, well, if you rest again, it's gone. You know, yeah. like oh, you have this, you have this little, you know, this little, this plus one to armor, or you yeah. know, this plus one to hit, because mm-hmm. you're just, mm-hmm. you know, you 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 slept in this place and got enlightened, and you could just see a fraction of the second to the future. Right. Just- <laughs> right. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whether it's 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 some sort of, you know. Uh, effect that you're just taking from a magic item or something you're coming up with like for most of these i would encourage you to make them unique and 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 mm-hmm. beyond like temporary hit points or advantage disadvantage kind of things like that those are low-hanging fruit in terms of like mechanical rewards to hand out uh to the uh to the party but it could be things like you know if you didn't have dark vision now you do or if you did have dark vision now it's better um some of these blessings you could borrow from like the special training and go like well maybe the blessing is that uh, you can do this thing that's on another class feature but it's through sort of magical beans and is the the in in setting reason for it is different and so you would treat it differently you know if i just know mm-hmm. how to do this because i was trained that way that's just a technique that i learned of how to move when i'm you know in darkness so that Mm -hmm. people with dark vision can't see me or something to you know gloom stalker training um versus like no this shadow spirit blessed me so that i i I have this then those are two very different things right even though the effect is uh it ends up being the same so it, yeah yeah exactly you didn't go and learn how to fly a helicopter you're trinity and you just asked them to download the schematics to how to right. pilot like in your head like there right, right yeah there should be a complete difference and it should i don't think it should be like permanent if it's if mm. it's like a, a a blessing like that it should mm. just do uh, i don't i don't know to me it like lasts, those kinds of things short timer it, yeah, it lasts for a short time and then that goes away. But maybe that's enough for the player to then seek out a master because they right, liked yeah. how that complemented their character and their mm. their, their already uh, instilled skill set. And yeah. now they'll seek out a master to learn how to do that more long term. Mm-hmm, you know, like mm-hmm. these these can uh, interplay between each other and like, yeah, here's a taste, you know. Mm-hmm, next time you mm-hmm. come back, you know, have a dollar fifty. Yeah, next time uh, you come back, you're gonna take a warlock levels if you want that permanent. You know, like <laughs> that yeah, kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> you know, We're and, and it, to... it, <laughs> it fills a conceptual space like that is otherwise left blank by by some of the classes. Like, yeah, warlock does suggest that it's possible to get in touch with very powerful supernatural entities and gain some benefit, but is everyone that does that taking a level in warlock like i don't think so like those are the ones who are all in there you know they they've laid their life on the line for this power and some just do it on a contractual or temporary basis and and like i said the i think the guidelines in the dmg are useful in terms of effect you know uh, mm-hmm. but go nuts especially if it's if it's yeah. limited use um this is the time to give them really powerful stuff just to let them play around with it and and see how it um you know destabilizes your campaign which is a good thing <laughs> uh, yeah 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 instability means change and change is a good thing uh, yeah. but yeah don't uh, don't don't they don't have to get uh, signed up with a company right away they can be temp employees for just a bit certainly yeah a trial period they like yeah. yeah do do a gig economy thing um, <laughs> um all right well that was fun uh so folks out there uh i hope you enjoyed the show Please like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. And also, if you check in the description and down in the comments, you're going to see a link to a mailing list. Get signed up on that mailing list because we are doing a Kickstarter. It is coming out in the next few months, sometime soon. Get all the updates from that uh, until we're talking about it openly and not uh, practicing obfuscation, which um, it's a <laughs> it's a skill. And we learned it. We are proficient at it. So... Have a good one. (laughs) Yeah.
going to introduce oh, this man. thing that could be a challenge and hazard in your games and then give everyone a means to bypass it because <laughs> it's inconvenient. All right. Well, yeah, but I can't designer, see it. Night. Can you yeah! think of a way it could be not inconvenient? Could maybe That's write the, the point. adventures? <laughs> Was it the thing? No, yeah. All right, no, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing like that. Mm -mm. I want the fun taken right out of every fucking game. You have to track that fucker in feet. You got to keep track of how many <laughs> feet you can see. <laughs> As if you have a measuring tape. Uh, anyway. <laughs>